We got a ton of new content in Rulings Update 1.3. I'm talking about new endgame quests, crazy new sigils, right stones and item drops. But of course, let's not forget about Best Girl Sandalphon. There's a lot to go through, so without any further ado, hello everyone, my name is Stark Hero and welcome back to another Gramble Fantasy Rolling video. I am so very excited to be talking about all of the new content that we have received in the game, included but not limited to Sandalphon, so let's talk about how you actually unlock him. So let us start with, of course, one of the biggest additions of Grand Blue Update 1.3. How exactly do you unlock Sandalphon? Well, if you come over here to the quest counter and on the proud difficulty, you're going to find a few new quests. Those being the Pageant of Might and Magic, Zathba's Volunteers, the Dark Swordman's Nightmare and finally Zero, where you go up against the Empowered Lucilius. All of these four quests are actually very very difficult and honestly I still have yet to come up with a way for you to consistently be able to solo these without actually cheesing the bosses so I may be making a guide on all of them or at the very least for the zero quest so that you are able to get all of these rewards. Now in order to unlock Sandalphon you're going to need to buy his recruit ticket from Sierra. However, Sandalphon's recruit ticket requires you to collect the Canaan White Bloom, which is a flower that you are able to obtain from the Lucilius quest. However, thankfully, you don't need to do the new Lucilius quest to be able to unlock Sandalphon. You can actually just do the Final Vision, the original Lucilius quest, and this quest is still going to reward you with some flowers, although they are going to come at a slower rate. And given how difficult it is to properly do the new Lucilius quest, especially if you are not well prepared, then I would advise you to just stick to the final vision to try to get Sandalphon as quickly as possible. Now thankfully there is a key NPC that you can visit, so here in Falka Village if we go up over to the church we're going to be finding Roland. And Roland is going to have a series of three different side quests that you're able to do that have some pretty easy deliverables for you to give him. With the first one consisting of quite simply knickknack vouchers and he is going to reward you with a potent greens plus sigil that also comes with supplementary damage 5. And given how powerful and rare supplementary damage 5 is, being able to get it together with an additional trait that is pretty much universal, it's something that is going to work well on pretty much every single character in the game, is of course going to be very beneficial for a lot of players. And regarding Sandalphon, Roland will actually be giving you one of those flowers, so you will be able to get Sandalphon a little bit quicker. Additionally, on top of that potent greens with supplementary damage sigil, the next side quest given by Roland will be giving you the Berserker Echo Sigil. And this one is one of the new sigils and it's actually quite crazy, as it is going to boost the chance of triggering supplementary damage the higher that your base attack is, going up to a guaranteed 100% chance to trigger it whenever your attack is 25,000 or higher. Additionally, any supplementary damage that is dealt by any other sources will also be added to that damage. Damage. So you will be able to take this trait and combine it with supplementary damage and now supplementary damage instead of dealing 20% more damage is going to deal 40% more damage. So this is going to result in you dealing a lot more damage and honestly the condition to be able to trigger this isn't even all that hard to reach. Now given that I have gone over the new Berserker Echo let's go over the rest of the new sigils. So if we come over here to the Knickknack Shack and talk to Sierra, you will be able to acquire the new following sigils. Those being the Berserker Echo, Spartan Echo and the Super Ultimate Perfect Dodge. Now we have already gone over Berserker Echo and Spartan Echo is going to work pretty much in the same way except that instead of it working with attack, it's going to work with your base health. So if you are at 80,000 health or higher, you will be able to guarantee the effect from Spartan Echo. But of course, because this effect requires you to increase your max HP, it is essentially going to be the sole opposite of the Terminus Weapon effect, which means you won't be able to take advantage of it because it requires you to be at a maximum of 45,000 health. And now this new sigil is pretty crazy, the Super Ultimate Perfect Dodge. This sigil is going to shorten the Perfect Dodge timing window, however on the plus side it will increase your damage cap by an entire 50% during the invincibility that you get from the Perfect Dodge. But as you can read from the description right there, the Super Ultimate Perfect Dodge is not going to work with Flight Over Fight as well as Improved Dodge, which would give you additional iframes on your dodge, making this a lot easier to activate. This is 
essentially a sigil that is doing risk reward right, as it is going to reward players that are capable of perfectly dodging attacks, even while having less iframes by giving them all of this extra damage. Now one thing that you could theoretically do to make super ultimate perfect dodge become even more powerful, would be to add nimble onslaught or dodge payback to your build, as this is going to extend the invincibility period after you perfect dodge, going all the way up to an additional 3 seconds, though keep in mind that you cannot stack the maximum level of nimble onslaught with dodge payback. So instead of having only 3 seconds where your damage cap is increased by 50%, you would have 6 seconds of invincibility to take better advantage of that damage increase. And then of course you get the additional bonuses of nimble onslaught or dodge payback. Now I'm sure that you have noticed that I have the super ultimate perfect dodge plus, spartan echo plus and berserker echo plus. Well yeah, you are able to get all of these with additional traits, as the berserker echo plus can come as a drop from the Zasva's volunteer quest and the spartan echo plus can come as a drop from the pageant of might and magic. Now as for the super ultimate perfect dodge, I believe that I got it from the trans marvel that has actually received quite a few changes, because now when you do the trans marvel there's actually quite a few new things that can drop for you. So let's go ahead and do one just in case. And this was one of the things that I wanted to show off that is perfect. One of the newest additions to the Trans Marvel system is that you are now able to get the Warpath sigils that were introduced in the previous update and they can come with additional traits like this one right here that has the Rosetta Warpath but also comes with quick cooldown. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in and I also got very lucky and ended up getting the Supreme Primarch Awakening that is of course the signature sigil for Sandalfon that is going to come with two of his already existing signature sigils. I think you guys already know how this works. And yeah, given that we now have a new character in Sandalfon, we of course have access to four different signature sigils for him, which I will go over in more detail in my Sandalfon guide. And of course, I would be remiss not to mention the brand new sigil synthesis method that you are able to use, that allows you to select from a variety of different sigils that you already have. So let's go ahead and take for example this stun power with steady focus, and combine it with this attack power 5 that also comes with stamina. You're going to spend some knickknack vouchers by doing this, but you may end up with some really powerful sigils, depending on what exactly you use to fuse. Now a very cool thing about this system is that it can actually be used to level the sigils that you have, because as you saw right there I was using a couple of sigils, both of which were at level 11, and the one that resulted from this fusion came at level 15. And additionally, in case you were curious, yes you can actually save scum the sigil synthesis, which means that you will be able to see the results that you would get, and decide whether or not to save those resources. And another very important thing is that you can actually produce a sigil that has the same main stat as both of their traits. So for example, if I I were to get lucky in this case, I would be able to get a sigil that comes with two level 15 damage cap traits. So let's go ahead and see if I can get it and there it is, just like that. And this is actually pretty huge for a lot of players that were having difficulty to make their builds because they didn't have access to a lot of very powerful sigils and in the case of sigils that you end up stacking multiple copies of, you would be able to do something like this and end up with a sigil that is going to grant by itself 30 levels of that trait with just one unique sigil. So this is a really cool system that I think a lot of players are going to have a lot of fun with and it's great to see that this was implemented this way. And another very important thing that can also drop from doing trans marvels is these new right stones as you can see right here I have one that comes with stun power level 20 so the stats that you would be able to get from some of these are absolutely nuts. As you can see I also have this one with weak point damage level 20 and if I were to predict the type of right stone that is going to become meta I believe that it would be the dread right stones that come with stun power level 20 and you would then have supplementary damage or critical hit rate as the additional traits. Seriously, this is a huge boost in damage and optimization for your builds. Now one new sigil that was also added which is actually pretty crazy is if we come over here to the proud difficulty quests, the Lockhorns quest, the one where you go up against Behemoth, apparently now has a new war elemental plus sigil. And given that the war elemental sigil is pretty much universal giving you 20% additional damage across the board, being able to have one of those that comes with an additional trait, especially if it is a beneficial one, is going to allow your characters to become much more powerful because you will have one more additional slot to spend with a different sigil. 
Now I really want to talk about these new quests that we have received in update 1.3 cause I think a lot of people are just going to jump straight into the zero quest trying to defeat the new level 250 Lucilius and they're essentially going to be facing a brick wall because of how difficult this is. The developers have pretty much hinted at this being the final update with the final quest and they have given us these huge challenges to tackle and so I think that you should take your time with the update, go back to some of the older quests like Bahia or some of the weaker quests that were added with the update and farm them for a little bit, do some trans marvels, get the new ride stones, perform a few sigil synthesis and be sure to take your time with this because again this is a huge challenge and if you are playing by yourself with only your AI companions like I was, unless your party is entirely optimized the only way for you to do these quests is to actually cheese them and I really do believe that these quests were made with the developers being informed, taking a look at the builds that we are using in the end game and adjusting the boss's health accordingly. Because yes, the bosses do a lot of damage, they're going to very often one-shot you in these quests. That was already the case with the base behemoth and Lucilius. The thing here with these quests is that the bosses have a ton of health, but additionally you also don't have a lot of time to be finishing them. And so if you're not playing online with other players and every single one of you is coordinating to make sure that each of you uses an SBA one after the other to keep on staggering the boss boss it's going to be very difficult for you to not hit the timer and actually fail the quest. And that is on top of the fact that some of these quests also come with multiple monsters hitting you at the same time, which can make things very, very difficult. Again, I plan on making a guide on some of these quests later down the road as I try to come up with more consistent strategies so that players are actually capable of soloing them with only their AI companions. But of course, until then, you can expect to see my Sandal Fun guide and I may also have a couple of other videos for Relink in the works. With that being said, let me know how you guys feel about the new updates, are you enjoying playing as Sandalphon and are you enjoying the new quests? Let's talk about that in the comment section below. And with that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting!